Man, it's your boy Eric, aka Young God, coming to you live in a pink dungeon. <laughs> Oh yeah, man, they get it here real raw rugged, man. I'm back in here with another review, Atrocity Exhibition. This is that Danny Brown. But before we get into it, I just want to let you guys know I'm saved. Hurricane Matthew did come my way, you know. I, for people that didn't watch my vlog that I really did, um, I'm I'm good. I'm I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? Nigga Gucci over here. Uh, I was in the red zone though. That means we were supposed to die, supposed to evacuate. Yeah, nigga stayed. The governor Rick Scott said you were supposed to leave. Hey man, like if you see my vlog, hey, I look Governor Scott in his eyes and I say, white man. You will not decree or dictate where I go, brother. You know, hey man, why, why, why do why do black preachers do that? Shit? Like they put so much emphasis on one word. You will not dictate where I demonstrate. <laughs> hey, hey, Father God, you will not logistigate <laughs> where I operate. Like why? Do you, shut up! Like, why do you have to put so much emphasis on one word? Black preachers are really weird, but uh, hey, let's get straight. I don't know what that was about, but let's get straight into it, man. I got a headache out of nowhere. Oh man, where did I come from? Uh, chapter number one, downward spiral. Uh, any Danny Brown fan like me, the first thing you think about is um, XXX. It's the downward spiral. You got me suicidal. This gun won't do it, so these pills will be the right. Like, that's, that's a good. That's a good ass song right there. Um, hey, but he started off perfect on here. I swear like I'm in a rave. <laughs> Very menacing beat, very menacing song. It was just very like, it's very evil, man. God damn this headache. But yeah, it was a very evil ass song right here. I really did like it. Nice intro to the uh, album. Tell me what I don't know. Another solid song. He's basically reminiscing on his past life, you know. He basically, what he said, his homeboy got popped to go walk to the store to get a swisher. Uh, this is a very reminiscing song. A pretty good song right here. Very telling song. But chat number three, Rolling Stone featuring Petite Nord. God damn, this hook right here, man. You know I'm living like a rolling stone, but don't feel for me. You know I'm in my zone, so don't talk to me. Don't know who Petite Nor is, but god damn, you gotta put him on more songs. This shit is just so, his voice and the way the beat was just so, boo -doo, boo -doo, boo -doo, boo -doo, boo -doo, boo it was just so like evil, it was very menacing like the first track. I gotta hear this nigga on more songs. It's very, very good voice. Uh, Danny did a good job, but Petit Noir, I don't know who you are, sir, but this is really good uh, hook right here. Uh, track number four, though, really though, man. Let's, let's get straight into this track right here, man. Uh, Danny Brown, he went hard as usual, but let's let's, let's focus on the features because they not featured through all of his album. Let's, let's take a little focus on them real quick, man. Abso, everybody said Abso is falling off. They didn't like this verse right here. But this nigga have bars in here, man. What he said, I'm wicked as Alistair. Crowley niggas know me well for heaven's sake. I'm the GOAT. Go to hell. That's crazy. The way he fit all that in two bars. The whole, I'm wicked as Alistair Crowley. Niggas know me well. Alistair Crowley is the guy that, you know, the the, the, the coaches guy. Uh, niggas know me well. For heaven's sake, I'm the GOAT. Go to hell. Because, you know, when you think of the, of the GOAT, it usually entitles like the, um... The, the devil or Satan or Lucifer or something like that. But he's saying that for heaven's sake, he's the GOAT. Basically like an idiom. I don't know if I used that word right. I probably didn't. Uh, I think that's an idiom. I think that's what that means. Um, an oxymoron. One of those. I don't know. It's one of those two. Uh, that was wild though, man. Uh, fucking. That was different, man. Then he said go to hell afterwards. Just the whole fucking crazy right there. Absolutely. You did a good job on this right here. I don't know what niggas talking about. And of course, Kendra came through with the hook, man. If I ain't booming, that's a goddamn lie. Whoa, whoa. Like, really? Of course, he don't go off. When you know that nigga emphasizing his T's and P's like he did on Rick and Morty, it's like, when he started doing that, you know he about to slide. He did it on here. He said, uh, made a million count. He said, uh, made a thousand, got a thousand, made a million count. Sheep. I, I can't even put that many emphasis on P myself, man. I made a million count. Sheep. Like, you know he about to slide. He already did. Fucking great Kendrick verse. But Earl Sweatshirt, this nigga stole the show, man. Earl Sweatshirt really stole the show. I first heard this and I was like, I don't get the hype behind this verse. It's really not that good. He didn't really say anything. Over the head bars, man. Over the head bars. So much over the head shit that I ain't catch. I had to really sit down and listen to. What he said, you get checked like the top of the month. Bar. Nothing to say about that. That's a bar right there. Uh, I ain't never been a nigga that was an honor to judge. The judge, your honor to fucking crazy, man. What he said? Dead weight. Never been a problem to dump. What? Fucking crazy, man. I strike a birdie on him while I hit your mouth with the club. Come on, man. 
Come on, man. You already know this review brought to you by Pizza Hut, man. Goddamn, thank you. Crazy, man. That was fucking ridiculous, man. Because you know when you play golf, the, the uh, you get a birdie, the, the club, the golf club. That was different, man. What else he said? I wake up early on him. Getting out the house is a must, like a sweaty pit. Come on, hey, who gave this nigga the permission slip to... Who, who wrote this nigga the mischief the goddamn... Whoa, nigga, slip and slide all over this, man. This was fucking crazy, man. And I love the way he ended off. What he said? It's the left-handed shooter, Cal Lowry the pump. Ah, that was hard. I'm not even a Raptors fan, but the way he just worded that, that was crazy, man. It's the left-handed shooter, Cal Lowry the pump. That was hard, man. Two thumbs up for that verse right there. That was ridiculous, man. Shout out to Earl Sweatshirt. He fucking came through with the best verse on that song. That was crazy. But then we get the loss. This is a very nice sample. Uh, I don't know. That was a, a cool-ass sample right there. Uh, and then you got uh, Danny Brown spit the typical Danny Brown perverted bars. Uh, watch it, Asa Akira. Oh, what did he say? He said, what did he say? Flat screen, watch it, Asa Akira. <laughs> And why do you have to watch Ace of Care on the flash? You know how much of a big perv you have to be just not use your phone like in 2016? That's some 2020 shit to put it on a flat screen. Hey, that's some like, you got it. You gonna see every creak and crevice and sweat dropping on her pussy. Hey, that's some very perverted shit right there. Uh, yeah. Hey, how do you think Danny nuts? You think he nuts like in the, the low voice, the high voice? Like he's like, Dah! or he's like, stop. <laughs> I don't, hey, that was a weird ass question. I have a big ass headache. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Chat number six, ain't it funny? This is like over a Charlie Angels type beat. Ain't it funny? Ain't it funny how it happened? I feel like he went on like YouTube and type named Charlie Angels type beat and found this. This is a very like Charlie Angels inspired. I can see this being like on the trailer for the next Charlie Angels movie. Great song though. Um, and then he's rapping over it and he shows that. I think he's really addicted to drugs, you know what I'm saying? But that's another video I gotta get into, rappers talking about being addicted to drugs. And he's like, crying out for help a little bit, but he's saying, I don't want the help. He says my rehab even pussy or something like that. But a uh, very telling song of him doing all these fucking drugs in like a span of two seconds, you know what I'm saying? That was wild. A nigga named like eight drugs in two seconds, hey man. It's a Guinness World Record book right there, man. Uh, chapter 7 of Gold Dust. Uh, bust open a flick looking like gold dust. Hey, what a rant. That, that's a, that's an action, that's an action Bronson type bro right there. I fuck with that because I'm a wrestling fan. So that was hard. Uh, when it, nigga went over like a goddamn Bollywood beating shit, man. That was, that was different. I fuck with that track though. Uh, White Lines. Oh, I love the melody here, man. No way, no way, no way. Will I ever serve a how? <laughs> Hey, Danny Brown's a humorous young man. That was a nice little song right there. I fuck with White Lines. Uh, Pneumonia. Hey, this, this is a banger right here, man. I made 30 bands in 30 minutes. And I think I'm a damn never spend it. Hey, this is a hard track right here, man. Uh, what do you say? He said he licked the clit. He said he licked the clit and she did the Macarena. Hey, can you imagine the bitch got them? Hey, you hit it between the. Hey, she got them. Hey, Macarena. <laughs> Hey, you, hey, that shit would throw me all the way off. I'm like, mm, yeah, baby, yeah, baby. She, hey, my girl. <laughs> like, what the fuck is she doing? Hey, that's a, that's a very interesting bar right there that, 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 that he had to go through that. Uh, but chapter number 10, uh, Dance in the Water. Um, dance in the Water. And y'all get wet. Now get wet. And nigga was really adamant about dancing in the water and not getting wet, man. That was a very interesting bar. I don't know how you could dance in the water and not get wet. It's an interesting little, uh, Little, hey, that's my word of day, idiom. I don't know if I'm using that right, man. That's a nice idiom, Danny Myers. I mean, Danny Brown. It's a nice idiom right there. And if that's not the right word, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not a fucking scholar. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, it sounds like American, it's not like Native American tribal music right here. I just see, like, a Native American just, like, asking for, like, rain to come in, like, their, like, desert or whatnot, like, back in the day. And they're just like, <laughs> I'm so fucking tired right now. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, man. I don't know why I gave Native Americans that accent as if, like, my grandmother wasn't full Native American. She didn't talk anything like that. Uh, <laughs> From the Ground, featuring Keela. I don't know how to say her name, but I bet she's a beautiful black sister that's in touch with her roots. I bet she wear a goddamn bonnet everywhere she go. Not a bonnet, but, like, a headscarf everywhere she go. And I bet it's very, very, uh, very in her roots, you know what I'm saying? I bet she don't even wear to sleep. I bet she wear it goddamn everywhere around the city. But, hey, I bet Keela is the most beautiful sister I've never seen. Hey, watch her look up on Instagram and she be like some white chick and her father's like in the Aryan Brotherhood or some shit. Wait, as far as I know, Keela's a beautiful black sister, man, because she sounds like she is. What she say? I built it all from the ground. 
This beautiful song right here. I really fuck with this song. I wish it was longer. I love her hook. I love that he with the deep voice. This is a perfect song right here. I just wish it was longer. Um, what else we got? When it rained. Uh, this has the. I think it was from Deeper, if I'm not mistaken. But I maybe it's from one of them songs on Pinata. It's like the little sample that Madlib used. I don't know if he got it from Madlib or if he got it from the person Madlib got it from. But it was a nice little sample. Uh, had, had, he had a nice bar in here. Kid don't play when you're trying to catch the fade. That was hard. Uh, pretty good song. Uh, Chat up is 13 today. Very, 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 very solid song. Not too much to say about it, but it was very, very solid. Uh, Get High featuring Be Real. Is Be Real in like every song that has to do with marijuana? I feel like he is. He's in every freaking song that has to do with marijuana. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this has to be in every like weed convention. It's just such like a very relaxed song that I feel like when you're high at a weed convention, you're like, eh, oh, there's a Denny, there's a Denny Brown uh, Be Real. Like, this is a very perfect weed convention song. I don't smoke weed, but I really did enjoy the song. And then Hail For It. Um, have a bitch like Iggy thinking that she's sicker than me. That's just some of that whole song right there. It's very, very... He always has a very, like, introspective song at the end of his albums, and I really do appreciate that. But, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I have a very huge headache, and I don't know if this review is even, like, coherent or not. But until then, y'all already know. I say what I mean, I mean what I say. Haters gonna hate him. Players gonna play, man. I'll holla at you. Bye.